This week's blog post is the History of Outdoor Sculpture in New York City, Part 4, Historical Figures. This occasional series of blog posts will highlight the most important sculptures in New York City and provide some historical and art historical context. To read other blog posts in this series, go to dianderantiwriter.com and click the New York City Sculpture tag. For photos of all outdoor sculptures in New York City in chronological order, see my Instagram page, which is this at the lower right. In the first post in this series, we saw sculptures of animals and politicians. In the second, we saw our first military and literary heroes. The third post included a list of memorials to the Civil War. This week, we look at figures from the early history of New York City and the United States. You may be wondering why we're starting with a survey of sculptures by subject rather than merely looking at changes in style and important sculptors. The answer is that the changes in subject are an important part of the history of sculpture in New York City over the course of a century and a half. For example, sculptures of the Founding Fathers are common in the late 19th century, but become very rare around the time of FDR's presidency, 1933-45, to 45, and we will see what replaces them. So in this post we are looking at sculptures that commemorate the early history of New York City and the United States. When the U.S. was just short of a century old, sculptures began to be erected in New York City that honored a more distant past. Aside from the equestrian sculpture of George Washington in Union Square from 1856, the earliest of these was an 1869 sculpture of Columbus by Emma Stebbins, who lived 1815 to 82. Intended for Central Park, it eventually ended up at Cadman Plaza in Brooklyn. In the 1890s, for the 400th anniversary of Columbus's first voyage, two more sculptures of Columbus were erected, one at Columbus Circle, that's this one, and one in Central Park. A large bust was erected in 1925 in the Bronx, and a life-size figure of young Columbus was erected in Queens in 1941. This sculpture from 1869 on the left is the first sculpture of an American Indian to be erected in New York. Not surprisingly, it was by John Quincy Adams Ward who believed that American sculpture should show American subjects without all those neoclassical trappings. Indian Hunter and Ward's 7th Regiment Memorial of the same year, which I mentioned in Part 3 of this series, were the first sculptures by an American artist to be erected in Central Park, and they were also Ward's first major commissions. Continuing the historical subjects, the late 19th century also saw a spate of sculptures of the Founding Fathers. Aside from Washington in Union Square, the earliest was this 1873 sculpture of the Marquis de Lafayette, which also stands in Union Square. Lafayette was commissioned by the French as a thank you to New Yorkers for supplies that they sent during the Siege of Paris in the Franco-Prussian War, 1870-71. This Lafayette was the work of Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, who later became famous for the Statue of Liberty. New York City has a second Bartholdi sculpture of Lafayette, that time with Washington, that's here, uh, dates to 1890. Everyone's favorite fighting Frenchman also appears on a relief by Daniel Chester French from 1917. This is in Prospect Park, and of course in the Brown's copy of Udon's portrait of Lafayette that we saw in the first part of this series, which is 1789, but this is a cast of 1932. A few years after that 1873 sculpture of Lafayette, a sculpture of Alexander Hamilton was placed in Central Park near the Metropolitan Museum. It was commissioned and donated by his son John Church Hamilton, who had devoted decades to writing a seven-volume biography of his father. Over the next 60 years, three more monuments were raised to Hamilton, two by Partridge, 1892 and 1908, and another by Adolf Weinman, circa 1940, that's this one. This Washington, here, from 1883, stands on the steps of Federal Hall, which was built on the site where Washington was inaugurated as the first president of the U.S. in 1789. It's one of John Quincy Adams Ward's best works. It's also one of the few works by Ward that has a neoclassical element. Behind Washington is a fasces, that's this, the symbol of the government's power in ancient Rome. New York has 
six life-size sculptures of George Washington, or seven if you count the ones on the Washington Arch separately. The only other historical figures that approach that number are Columbus and Alexander Hamilton, with four full-size sculptures each. The other sculptures of Washington are by Brown, 1856. This is Washington and Lafayette, which we just saw, by Bartholdi. Uh, this is Schrady. It's at the east end of the Williamsburg Bridge. The ones on the Washington Arch are by McNeil and by Calder. And this one, which is much more recent, 1967, is by Donald DeLue to Flushing Meadows. McMahony said of this sculpture that he did of Nathan Hale in 1890, quote, I wanted to make something that would set the boot blacks and little clerks around here thinking, something that would make them want to be somebody and find life worth living. This was the first major commission for McMahony's, 1863 to 1937, who became a very prominent sculptor in the 1890s. These are the other sculptures in New York City that commemorate the early days of New York and the U.S. Here we have Giovanni da Verrazzano, the first European to sail into New York Harbor. That was in 1524. This is the Pilgrim, honoring the English who arrived in New England in 1620. This is New York in Revolutionary Times, one of a pair of sculptures that represent the early days of New York in allegorical figures. This is Peter Stuyvesant, the last Director General of New Amsterdam, who surrendered it to the English in 1664. Didn't want to, wasn't given any choice. This is Abraham de Peister, a merchant and government official in the late 17th century, just after Manhattan was taken over by the English. This is Benjamin Franklin, and this is Thomas Jefferson. That's it for this week's post. DianeDuranteWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDuranteWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.